Auschwitz is the paramount symbol of the Holocaust. We know about Auschwitz because there was a labor camp as well as a death factory. After World War II, memoirs of survivors, mostly assimilated Western Jews, slowly entered into public consciousness. However, Auschwitz as the symbol excludes the largest group of Holocaust victims, the mostly Yiddish-speaking Eastern Jews of Poland, Lithuania, Latvia, Belarus and the Ukraine. In the communist countries, witnesses and chroniclers were for a long time forbidden to present these victims as Jews. Therefore, the Riga Ghetto and Latvian Holocaust Museum is organizing an exhibition which explores with 60 contemporary maps and 20 appropriate photos what happened to the Jews east of Auschwitz. This trailer introduces the exhibition with 12 of these maps. Here are represented the largest Jewish cities in absolute numbers on the left and in percentages on the right. This Nazi book from 1938 about Jewry in Eastern European space states that the urbanization of Jews leads to them dominating the retail sector, the liberal professions and the credit institutions or results in their proletarization and pauperization. But as the mentality of these Eastern Jews remains uprooted, they exploit non-Jews mercilessly or become revolutionary internationalists. For the author, Peter Heinz Serafim, this explains the many Jewish bankers and Bolsheviks. To him, migrations and ghettos are the two sides of Jewish life. The unhygienic Yiddish ghetto forms a city within a city which resists assimilation and is vital for the Jewish attempts to dominate the economic and cultural life of their host nation. Seraphim's depiction of such a parasitic power base for Eastern Jews becomes a turning point in the Nazi discussions on ghettos. That explains why there are no ghettos put up in Germany. On this reconstructed map from Yad Vashem's Encyclopedia of the Ghettos, we see that all ghettos were situated east of Auschwitz, with only one exception, the model ghetto, Theresienstadt. Seraphim's standard work also provides the background for a new reading of the Express Letter by SS Chief Heydrich of September 1939, there is no central command for creating new ghettos in Poland. Hence the differences in the years of setting up, as well as in the forms and functions of the local ghettos. This map from January 1941 presents the transfers of Volksdeutsche from Romania up to Estonia. Volksdeutsche are people considered to be Germans, although their families lived in other countries for several generations, even centuries. To draw these people back home to the Reich is one of the reasons for the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact and for the agreements of Germany with the Baltic states and with Romania. After racial examination, the great majority settle in the annexed parts of Poland, which have to be Germanized. To make room for them, special forces uproot Catholic, secular and Jewish Poles and confiscate their properties to compensate the Volksdeutsche. The Warsaw Ghetto is delineated in several contemporary maps, like this manuscript plan on a secret military map. Together with target pictures, the German city map of Warsaw was essential for preparing the airstrikes of September 1939. The heaviest bombings especially wrought havoc in the old Jewish neighborhood on Yom Kippur. The next year on Yom Kippur, a decree was issued to set up separate housing districts in Warsaw. Then, after a month of conflicts between the Poles and Jews about the exact boundaries, this plan of the Jewish ghetto is drawn by SS Sturmbahnführer Max Jesuiter, chief of staff of the Warsaw SS. 
His plan on the military map forms the cartographic basis for the sealed ghetto of November 1940. This huge ethnic map from 1953 reconstructs the local distribution of nationalities in eastern Galicia for 1939. The author, the geographer and demographer Volodymyr Kubijowicz, bases his data on Austrian and Polish censuses, church registers and many interviews in refugee camps just after the war. Here we see the area around Lvov or Lemberg, now Lviv, in the Ukraine. Although identities are never unambiguous, the yellow segments give a good picture of the proportion and diffusion of Jews in towns and villages in eastern Galicia on the eve of their mass extermination. In June 1941, Hitler attacked the Soviet Union. After the German army entered Lviv at the end of June, police forces of a German division and Ukrainian militiamen kill more than 3,000 Jews. This pogrom is provoked by the rumor that Jews had joined the Bolsheviks in the massacre of the political prisoners just before the departure of the Red Army. This rare street poster, issued by the German governor, compels the Jews to resettle north of the railway in two slums chosen by the new Ukrainian mayor. Between half November and half December, they have to leave their neighborhoods one after the other and walk along the indicated routes to the ghetto. Within weeks, the former Baltic states are also occupied by the Nazis. On August 23, the Latvian newspaper Tevya announces the creation of a Jewish ghetto in a mixed Jewish and Russian suburb of Riga. Only weeks after its closure in the end of October 1941, most of its 30,000 Jews are massacred on two days by German murder squads and Latvian militia in the nearby woods of Rumbula. The cleared part of the ghetto is then allocated to Jews deported from Germany. Maps in the local papers create a climate of terror for the Jews in the occupied cities. They also indicate opportunities for booty to profiteers, because they are the first plans to become public. Walter Steilecker was the commanding officer of the Einsatzgruppe A and the higher SS and police leader of the Reichskommissariat Ostland an area including Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania and Belarusia, as we see here on a colored German administrative map from 1942. His mobile killing squad of some thousand men followed the German army group north through the Baltics and areas west of Leningrad. Its mission was to hunt down and annihilate Jews, communists and other undesirables. This statistical map from January 1942, included in Stahlecker's report to Berlin, sums up 218,250 Jews murdered by his units and local militia during the first phase of the Holocaust by bullets. Sometimes Jewish maps survive that bear witness to their history during the Holocaust. A fine example is the yearbook Slobodka Ghetto, 1942. This Yiddish booklet forms part of the secret diary of Avraham Tori, secretary of the Jewish Council, and records events in the ghetto of Kovno or Kaunas in Lithuania. It also contains the sequence of overlay maps. They record the originally proposed boundaries, the ghetto at the time of its closure in August 1941, the liquidation of the small ghetto in October 41, and the reductions in May and in October 1942. The Karnas ghetto becomes a transit camp, not for resettlement in the east, but to nearby death. The German railroads, with its modern infrastructure and dedicated personnel, formed part of the bureaucratic machinery of destruction. 
The Reichsbahn even offers the SS reduced fees if more Jews are pushed into the trains and exempts children under four from payment. Here you see part of the railway network on Map East from 1943, with Sobibor, Belsetz and Auschwitz indicated by arrows. This map does not clarify the placing of some extermination camps, because the question is, are the localizations of Sobibor, Belsetz and maybe even Treblinka based on their being near a railway junction of standard and broad gauges? In the meantime, in Warsaw, the Great Deportation is underway. In September 1942, an SKP from Treblinka, Jakub Krzepitski, returns to the ghetto to report what goes on there. This manuscript map, drawn in indelible ink with typed explanations, is based on his observations. We see the extermination camp of Treblinka with the train tracks to the left. Number 9 is the tube to number 10, the shower building, where the Jews are gassed. Maps like this are not only made for later prosecution when the time would come to bring the Nazi criminals to justice. This simple map functions first and foremost as a means to locate the unimaginable. Here you see the ghetto of Minsk on a German city map from 1942. After July 41, almost 100,000 Jews were ghettoized in a rundown former Jewish neighborhood now surrounded with barbed wire. Some 20,000 of them came from Germany or from the Protectorate of Bohemia and Moravia. In a series of pogroms in November 1941, March 42 and July 42, more than 60,000 of its Jews were murdered not far from the city. The resistance of Jews in Minsk followed quite a different strategy than in Warsaw. With the help of the Belarusian underground, about 10,000 Jews escaped to the dense forests nearby where they strengthened the units of Soviet partisans. With maps of some cities and their surroundings, the Riga exhibition discusses how nationalist traditions and geophysical conditions influence ghetto uprisings. Auschwitz. We know about Auschwitz because there was a labor camp next to